Well, hey, greetings and salutations, everybody, and welcome back to the channel uh, for our continuing coverage of CinemaCon 2023. Mm -hmm. uh, we already did the Sony presentation. We did the Warner Brothers presentation, but we just got back from seeing The Flash, the movie that we can confirm right now is real. It actually happens. And there was some talk going on, you know, James Gunn has been saying that he thinks it's one of the greatest comic book films of all time, and, and he had nothing to do with making of the movie, so that's something. Uh, David Zaslav got on stage today and said he thought it was the greatest comic book movie he's ever seen. He's seen it three times. He's seen it three times. And while I respect very much the opinions of David Zaslav and James Gunn, I personally do not feel it is one of the greatest comic book films of all time, but damn it. It's great. It's really good. Yeah, I would I would agree with that assessment. I, I would say that I went in with a good amount of hype, and while I am not going to sit here and say it ranks up there with Logan and the Dark Knight and whatever, I I it would it did not disappoint at all. It it had great action, some really imaginative action sequences, yes. particularly the opening, <laughs> wonderful humor wonderful humor a story that was both complex but not convoluted um per great performances wonderful crowd-pleasing moments some great surprises it is a just a solid wonderful comic book movie the flash did not disappoint rob you're just quick overall impressions of the flash well i, I feel the same way that that you do but i have to say that one of the reasons for me I would not call it the greatest comic book movie of all time is that it relies on a bunch of other comic book movies yeah, to very exist. True, very and true. it's not like Logan, which is a play on the X-Men universe. This film, as we know in the trailers, you've got a lot of Man of Steel. You see the world devastators. You see the, or the world engines that are blowing up. You see that Zod is in this movie. We know that Michael Keaton's in this movie. So it's drawing from all these other people's yeah. movies. It's almost like a greatest hits. In a way, yeah. But I would say that what I really liked about the movie, it really had a feel of an 80s movie. Almost like a, if John Hughes had directed a comic book movie, yeah, but with, a little with, darker. With a lot of sci-fi, time travel, universal elements. And I'll tell you something. It reminded me most in terms of tone of a certain movie from the 80s that's actually name-checked quite a few times in this movie. Oh my God, that, was, that whole was, thing it was, was so good. Good. It was so brilliant, the way they used that. I was like, no, and it's it's a running joke. It's it's, it's a and, brilliant running joke a brilliant, of a fabulously popular 1980s sci-fi movie, and they use it brilliantly. And it requires you have a certain amount of ins knowledge of 80s movie uh, when, history. When they drop the joke, and we won't give it away, when they drop the joke, Ann Termy said, I don't get that. I had to explain because so and so <laughs> was so and so <laughs> at so and so. Yeah. And then she, that, but that was that was kind of a, a deep cut joke that only people like really into film would kind of pick it, up on. But it that. also sets up the theme. Yes. The yes, whole theme of the, the, the movie itself. And I was like, okay. This is some great screenwriting, and I, I thoroughly enjoyed it. Can we talk about, I thought Ezra Miller, they were fucking great. Look, we we have always said, now look, you know what I believe, Ezra Miller can no longer be Flash. Uh, I hope the best for Ezra, all that kind of stuff. Now, I, But, you know, the reality is, I, I'm not going to change my thing, I've always enjoyed Ezra Miller as Flash. Even when people, and you know, I always love it when the way Ezra Miller runs, and they really lean into the way Ezra Miller runs. Oh, yes, they do. But there's always been this stupid criticism about the way Ezra Miller runs. That's not how you run, because Ezra Miller does this really weird thing. And I always go, when people bring that up, I go, oh, that's that's interesting. So how does somebody who runs faster than the speed of sound run? Show me. Show me an example of somebody who runs faster than the speed of sound and how they run. Anyway, but they actually lean into that in this movie, and it's brilliant. And there's a sequence where Ezra Miller runs at the beginning of the movie that I just put a huge smile on my face. Mm. Just put a big smile on my yeah. face. So let me go over to you, Ray. Just general impressions overall. The movie ended. How were you feeling about it? I think this is one of my favorite DC movies of all time. To be, I, I'm being completely honest. I, there was... You laughed there, a lot. There I was heard a, you laughing a lot. I, I could... There's not one moment I I had some sort of emotion coming out. 
I really like how like this Flash character who I've just been um accustomed to from the animated series and this right, and that. Yeah. I've never watched the Flash CW series. There's 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 it, it, it fleshed out the character of the Flash, like the human side of the Flash. They really a lot did. They made me. it a human story. And, and not only that, it gave me like some self like reflection on the growth of a person from this age and from that age. <laughs> yeah, no, they really how, did. The, yeah. they, they played into that really well where it's like, oh my God, if I was 18, I would have made the same, you know? And so those aspects of the movie really got to me. And just like the his overall purpose of, you know, just like the family stuff. Yeah, you know, I'm not going to get into specifics, but that that got to me big time. Because, it was good. You know, yeah. I mean, the humor, like you said, John, there were so many funny jokes. Yeah. And and, and the thing is, it's not a, it's not jokey. The, it's, the humor is all earned. It's all situational. It's all character interaction, but it's, it's, it's very funny. But it, it's sharp. It, it's very sharp. Like we were talking about the there's a there's a movie reference in it, and they make a joke about the movie. And the, but that even that joke was a deep cut. Yeah. So it's a the the humor's all well thought out, and quite often there are jokes in it where they you have no idea they're doing it. Earlier in their film, they lay the groundwork for a joke that's coming up. Yes. Thirty five minutes later, right? And you didn't even realize they were laying the groundwork for it. But at the same time, it's not a yuck yuck movie. Certainly, you're laughing hysterically a lot throughout the film, but the jokes were never there just for the sake of being jokes. The jokes were there, the humor was there to create the atmosphere of all the scenes that you're in. Mm. And they all fit. And I, I wanted to mention this one thing. There's, a, there's something that's happened in some of the trailers that rubs me the wrong way. I don't mind the trailers where we see Michael Keaton going, I'm Batman, right? Because we want to see Michael right. Keaton. But then when we see in the other trailer where he's in kind of in the same pose, he goes, you want to get nuts? Let's get nuts. And I'm and and I thought when I saw that, I'm like, that's just stupid. Like that's just going to the well a little too much. That's too on the nose. It's too gimmicky. But then when we saw it in the movie yeah, in context. and the context in which he says it, I'm like, there you go. Yeah. Now that makes sense. Yeah. And it and it works. Um, the the stuff with Zod and we everybody's wanted to say, what is the name of the character? Feora? Feora, yeah. Everybody's wanted to see more Feora ever since Man of Steel came out. So we got a little bit more Feora and General Zod. And you, they show some of the action sequences in the battle between the Flashes and the Kryptonians in, in some of the trailers. But, man, there is a... And we're not going to go into details, but we talked about it a lot in the car ride, in the cab ride on the way back. The opening scene... Oh, my God. The opening scene is so creative and they're like okay how do we create a scenario because you know a lot of these comic book movies action movies will create kind of a almost a separate separated action scene just to kind of bring you into the movie right and they do that and you're watching it and it's like the writer sat down and thought how can we make this feel totally outrageous and like what is the worst possible thing you can imagine <laughs> Let's make that happen. And you, even as it's all happening, everybody in the audience, 5,000 people in the sound room are going, oh! I, I gen, John, I was genuinely, <laughs> at one moment, the scene when it really, when everything hits the fan, literally, I, I was like, oh my God. Like, I couldn't believe where they went there. And I'm like, well, how are they going to fix this? And it yeah. was. And I'll tell you what, some great scenes too, between both the different Batman and Barry. Like yeah. in in the first act of the film, there's a you see little glimpses of it in the trailers, but the Ben Affleck Batman having like there's great dialogue and conversation between Barry and that Bruce later on in the film between the Michael Keaton Bruce and him, and one of the best explanations of what a time paradox would actually look like if somebody changed something in the past. Yeah, I had I've ever seen. And I really love the way using they, food, using food to describe it, and who describes it is fantastic. Yeah, yeah, you just gotta see it. I gotta say that that seeing the suit in blue and gray was really nice. Oh, you mean Ben Affleck? The, the, the Ben Affleck, the ben yeah. Affleck one. Just seeing it, that shade of that Batman, it's just it, it hit different a little bit. It, it, it may have been Ben Affleck, the same thing, but just seeing that suit on screen, like in a movie, yeah, like and and, and it been, been taken seriously I, because he had all the little, all the little Velcro things on him. Yeah, I just like, thought it looked cool. Uh, you That's know what, one of the visual tasties that I saw. The bummer there. for me is, oh God, after watching this, I'm like, 
why couldn't we have got a Ben Affleck? So There's a lot cool. of things. Oh, that, I, there's a lot of things that I was like, feelings why like couldn't that, we that, got? I mean, Ben Affleck yeah. deserved his own solo Batman. Movie. There's a lot of feelings uh, of that for a lot of things. Yeah. After this movie, right. yeah. So let let's talk about one of the new elements, Supergirl. Wait, Sasha. Oh, oh, okay. Oh, yeah, but we yeah. got a super but before sponsor. Before we do that, we have a super sponsor of this review of The Flash. We're going to take just a second before we get into the our other thoughts on The Flash. We're going to talk about Supergirl. We're going to talk about the, the third act, all that kind of stuff. Again, no spoilers. But we want to take a second and thank one of the sponsors, the sponsor of our continuing coverage here at CinemaCon, the wonderful folks, my mobile service provider, Edmund Mobile. We want to thank a sponsor of this video, Mint Mobile. From the gas pump to the grocery store, your utility bills and favorite streaming services, inflation is everywhere. Seriously, make it stop. Thankfully, there's one company out there that's giving you a much needed break. It's Mint Mobile. As the first company to sell premium wireless service online only, Mint Mobile lets you order from home and save a ton with phone plans starting at just $15 a month. You guys know that ever since I switched to Mint Mobile, I've been saving almost 70% a month over my old phone plan. For people looking Looking for extra savings this year? Mint Mobile offers premium wireless for just $15 a month. By going online only and eliminating the traditional cost of retail, Mint Mobile passes the significant savings on to you. All of their plans come with unlimited talk and text plus high-speed data delivered on the nation's largest 5G network. Use your own phone with any Mint Mobile plan and keep your same phone number along with all your existing contacts. Switch to Mint Mobile and get premium wireless service starting at just $15 a month. To get your new wireless plan for just 15 bucks a month and get the plan shipped to your door for free, go to mintmobile.com slash campia. That's mintmobile.com slash campia. Cut your wireless bill to 15 bucks a month at mintmobile.com slash campia. And thank you to our friends at Mint Mobile for being my mobile service provider. They should be your mobile service provider as well and for sponsoring our coverage here at CinemaCon. All right. Let's uh, let's roll into the character that is new. When they first revealed that we were going to get Supergirl in there, and, and you know, of, of course, uh, you look, when fans just get pieces of information, we tend to freak out, right? Like we don't. All we heard was that Henry Cavill's not in it. And it's going to be Supergirl, and oh, they're replacing a girl, girl, Superman with a woman, blah blah blah, right? So, but granted, even I, like, I would, you know, I'm a Henry Cavill guy. I'd like to see Henry Cavill in there, but as the trailers have progressed i've kind of been this car Zorel has been growing on me and does not disappoint she sasha cali i think her name's cali yeah she's a movie star she's a movie she's star. an absolute <laughs> movie star her voice her presence she had gravitas if anything i wish she was in the movie more yeah you know i mean moving for i'll tell you something they've talked about i mean because the, this movie is the way it is They've talked about they're going to make a Supergirl movie. Mm. I, I would cast her. I know it's weird. Now, to, to be clear, Warner Brothers has never said yeah. they're making a Supergirl movie. We've heard reports, right. but I don't think well, Warner they Brothers... Well, no, they said that as part of their There's... launch movies, that they were going to do this to Super, Super well, Supergirl. Well, we'll get oh, it. Yeah, but, 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 but whether it... Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, yes. we don't know. Yeah, of yes. course. There's been, yeah, saying... we're, we're, we're treading very carefully. Oh, yeah, here. I'm just saying I'm they gonna... probably wouldn't use I'm... her, but I'm just saying... They should use her. I'm gonna bring up, she's great. Bring up another angle to this, right? I loved her. Uh, another because John brought up something like that. If we from what we saw about Supergirl and we put the Henry Cavill Superman in it, it would it have worked as well as it no. did? No. No, it no, wouldn't no. explain no. exactly and yeah. everything that happens makes sense. Well that and there's one part that I, I turn to you and you your ears perked up. There's one sequence and I just said that's injustice right there. And you know what I'm oh, talking yeah, about. No, there, it was, was such a sweet there, movie. There was a lot of... This movie was chock-a-block full of stuff that are, that are people who love love these characters and love the DC Universe. There is so much to like in this movie. And sometimes, look, I will say this. I think there's going to be a lot of people that don't quite understand. Again, the multiverse nature of it all yeah, gets a little... Yeah. I didn't mind it, but there's some people who are going to be like, hey, what? I... Love the fact that this movie just spins off into it. It gets crazy. We they did get nuts. They they, they get got nuts. nuts, and I loved it for that reason. Now I'm seeing a lot of people in the live chat are asking: Is Henry Cavill in it? Is Henry Cavill in it? Is Henry Cavill in it? All right, let me answer that question. 
I'm not gonna say a thing. No, <laughs> I'm not, I'm not gonna say every anything. single surprise that comes at you, you want it. You, um, you want to go in it without knowing anything. But that's yeah. the thing. It, the nature of the movie, like if if you're watching this movie, it, when you go to watch a movie and you're watching the first 10, 15 minutes, if I were to tell you right now that Henry Cavill is in it, then that would lead your expectations a certain way and could spoil a little bit of it for you. If I were to tell you Henry Cavill is not in it. Again, because of the nature of this movie and the way it starts, if I were to tell you he's not in it, that will kind of spoil a little bit of, of your experience of the movie. So yeah. I am simply not answering the question about whether or not Henry Cavill's in it. But I, I like I, I think you're absolutely right, Ray. Like once you see the movie, you realize, oh, like regardless of everything else that's going on with Henry Cavill in the DCU, even if Henry Cavill, we found out six months ago, he has re-signed up and he's going to be Superman for the next five years it still wouldn't have made sense to have him as Superman in this movie. Yeah. The, Having Supergirl in this movie makes much better sense it, it does. for the movie itself. It's more impactful, I think, too. Yeah, yeah. The movie, everything that happens, all the different plot points, they're really interesting. They are. Like, everything that, yeah. all these revelations that happened were fascinating to me, and they come throughout the whole film. The film never stops giving you more information. And for that reason, I was completely fascinated. I had no idea. What are they going to do next? Yeah. Uh, by the way, uh, our channel member, thank you for being a channel member, Michael. Michael Gonzalez is asking, how's Affleck? I, I thought, listen, we're, I'm, I'm not going to mince words here. Affleck, as we've all already known going into the movie, everybody already knows this. Affleck's not in a lot of the movie. Uh, but he's not in it. He's not a cameo either. Right. Right. Okay, so let me be clear about that. I thought Affleck was great. Affleck is Affleck. He was great. Yeah, he, man. He's great. He's great. Man. Anytime he's Batman, he's great. So just expect the same. And again, a great scene where him and Barry are having this really. And again, it's hinted at. You see a little bit of it in the trailer, so I'm not spoiling anything. But that that conversation that they have there is really kind of one of the 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 trigger pin moments of the movie. Is that conversation that sets a bunch of of events in motion. Yeah, I mean, and there was other things about this really honors Zack Snyder's version of Batman right. in a number mm. of different ways. And there's ways that were unexpected to me. And just I the, was like, really? And just overall love for DC. There's a lot yeah. of love. Oh. No matter if Zack Snyder, whatever, you see it everywhere in this, in, in this film. The thing I love about this movie is despite all the cool effects, whatever, this and that, what the my lasting impression after the movie was a human part of it like oh yeah. there's there's like yeah. an underlying thing that got me to the point where i was just like oh i can't okay like at the end i was just like oh. getting weepy yeah, yeah it's like it's like we were talking about um spider-man across the spider-verse the other day mm. like it's great yeah webs and swinging and all that kind of stuff, but it's a great movie at the core about this young man who's trying to figure out his identity in the world and struggling how to balance his relationships with his mother, with his father, uh, with Gwen, with himself, what's his role. It, at, at the story, it's at the center of the, the Amazing Sp or the Spider-Man Across Spider-Verse is the story of Miles Morales. It's a very human story and dealing with really everyday human things that a lot of people have to deal with, but obviously in a different way as a superhero. I think that's part of the reason why the Flash, even were it not a DC movie, this is a fun movie because it's, at its heart, it's dealing with those core, real human, real yeah. emotions. And the humor, I keep saying, it feels like an 80s movie. Yeah, in yeah, the yeah. sense that 80s movies, you could have heart and you could have humor and you could have real drama. And this movie, I'll say this, this movie was really fun to watch really because I really watch. had no idea. I'm like, where are they going with all of this? From the very beginning. From the very beginning. Fun to watch. From the very they, beginning. They just stepped up, like stepped uh, on the gas I, right I mean, away. It was, and everything, whenever they had an opportunity to add humor, and the humor was not, it, did, it was not detracting. It was all earned by the movie. Like they didn't tell a joke where you go, eh. What about when away. Iris goes into his apartment? That, that plus <laughs> that they, the whole it's, the whole auditorium it, was like it, laughing their gut again. It, it, I'm not gonna tell you what happens, it's just but funny. It's just, it was. It, I, I do have to point out one thing, and just just to set the record straight, a, a few months ago when when we heard this was actually gonna come out, and with all the things that were happening with Ezra, I said. I'm not sure if I would want to watch this movie because of what happened. Right. And I respect anyone who's, who feels that way yeah. right now. I'm just judging this movie 
on its own merit. On its own merit with the Flash character and what they did with the character as like a human. It's, it, I don't want to get into any of the other stuff around it. Just as a movie itself, I got to say, it's one of my favorite DC movies. Barna, I love Batman Begins. I, that's one of my top movies. You know, uh, I just love this movie. I just, I just think it brought more to the character than I'm accustomed to. There's well, more aspects to this character now that I care about than before. Well, Ezra Miller, they're front and center of this movie. Yeah. And they were great. Yeah, look. They I, were so much fun to watch. I still have not changed my position that the actions of Ezra Miller following filming this movie disqualifies them from being Flash again. I, I, I think Ezra's time as Flash right. has done, and I feel it should be done. Should, yeah. But that does not change the fact that having watched this movie, I, I, I totally concur. Ezra is great in the movie. Yeah, and, what and a I great have no doubt it his, would be. Yeah. And we, this is a great ending for Ezra's run. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> run, get it? This is a great ending for Ezra's run as, as Flash. Right, right, right. I just like the, the way that I feel now about the Flash. Is It's just not a fast guy. There's there's a lot more to this guy. Yeah. Like, oh yeah, oh yeah. More. It's beautifully, beautifully, beautifully done. And you know what? I I I never knew how I'd feel because we saw in the trailers early two flashes, two as two Ezra's, right? Mm. It was very very well and, done. And they are acting against themselves. Each other, yeah. And that was great. And that the interplay the, between them that, was great. That's the part that I really enjoyed. It's like if you could go back and talk to your eighteen year old self, <laughs> your eighteen year old self thought they knew everything about oh yeah it just shows you how much growth humans have from the time where they think they know everything yeah. to the time where they actually do know everything they need to know you know by the just... way i'm also seeing more questions a lot of people asking what's the runtime now theory okay in theory the presentation was supposed to start at 4 45 and end at 7 15 yeah they didn't start at 4 45 because andy muschietti and his producing partner who is his sister came out and they gave a little they were cute. they were really cute they're, yeah they're adorable together so i'm gonna guess the movie probably started at five yeah and then i think ended at about 705 now i just a couple things to mention here one the muschietti's came out and said at the beginning this is still not final lock right uh, the movie's still two months away, and they're still polishing a few things. So what you see in the theaters, what we'll all see when it comes out in June, might be slightly different than what we saw. Also, second thing to know, because I saw a few people asking, post-credit scenes, post-credit scenes, they didn't even show us the credits. Nope. Like, forget post-credit scenes. Like, when the movie ended, it ended, screen went black, that's it. They didn't even roll credits or anything. So I could not tell you if there are post-credit scenes. I couldn't tell you if there's one or two. I mean, in some ways, I think there won't be any. I will say, it kind of oh, ends the you, but they, they might. I will, I will say one thing. This movie doesn't need a post-credit scene. It doesn't need one. You don't yeah, need one. Trust need me. One. Yeah, yeah. As soon as everyone sees it, <laughs> trust me, but, you'll be like. But is it true to say, do you agree if I say that the last scene of the movie kind of feels like a post-credit scene like the way they end the movie yeah, feels yeah. like a post-credit scene it, in and of itself it, it does but but you the movie it ends and cuts to black and we're all like ah, yeah you know, you're the everybody that there's like ah. <laughs> and i i will not and you say that i will say even stuff before that a lot of it is just like just glory to me you know oh, what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, yeah, but the, the post-credit scene is not needed. It's, it's my main point. Okay, You'll get enough. This movie has a great, great climax. Um, right. There's there's a question here that's from, um, uh, boy, uh, Geraldine uh, Tan. Who says, Does it feel like the end of the DCEU? You know what? In a way, in, in a way it kind of does. Like, look, we've heard a lot of people say that the Flash movie is going to kind of reset the DC universe. And I... I'm not going to say how true or not true that kind of is, but I the best answer I can give is, in a way, it kind of felt like the end of the DCU. To follow up on that, I, and this is more of a philosophical musing on my part as opposed to something definitive in the movie, I thought this movie was an absolute love letter to the Snyderverse. I thought because, you know, Ezra Miller was cast by Zack Snyder. It goes back to Man of Steel. There's a lot of other things that I won't talk about. And it really, there's a reverence to Zack Snyder's but vision of the universe I, that is falling I will apart. play off, I'm not, I'm devil's advocate. Of that. Yeah. I will play devil's advocate and say, after I finished watching the movie, I didn't think of Zack Snyder at all. 
Yeah, I, and I will say, and, and that's, say it, and it that's was, them kind of well, that's, you that's, know, you know, that's me with respect to Zack Snyder. I love his Justice League, the the the, the four hour cut, right? Crazy, I didn't, right? I didn't Crazy, it. right? I long movie, no, yeah, I love what he did there. I actually, of course, you want, watched it over four months. Uh, yeah, yeah, I actually wanted to see him finish that, but I, I, for me, I just didn't. Zack Snyder's name didn't even cross my mind. I, 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 I got to agree with right. I, I but but if that's like what you saw, then I expect that. What, what I mean is, though, it, it still showed such reverence for all of those characters. Right, well, right. It showed continuity. The design yeah, of, I, I of say Zod. That, that it showed continuity. The design of Zod, maybe during that part where the we see the ships again, it's like, yeah. And then, the, yeah. So, yeah, that, that Zack Snyder. Well, not just, it's not there. just the design of Zod. No, yeah, no, yeah, no, there's yeah, a lot yeah. of stuff. Know, there's there was lot. really good continuity there, and I mean, I, and again, listen, there's so much we are not talking about. Right, there's yeah. so much we're not telling because, yeah. like we said, it had great action, great humor, great story, great emotion. But I also mentioned that there's a lot of really good surprises, mm -hmm. and we're not even touching on any oh, of those. Can we go back to that person's question about the, is it the end of the DCU? Does it feel like the end okay, of the for me, I just know that there's two more movies, like, that are coming out, the Blue Beetle and right. Aquaman, Which right? We don't know how. Connected. We don't know how. I could see it as in, oh, it's starting the wheels turning of shutting the shutting uh, it. Yeah. Depending yeah. on these yeah. next two movies, because remember, the you could see it in the either first way. Aquaman movie, right? If you never told anybody that that Aquaman movie was a part of a shared cinematic universe, you wouldn't have noticed, right? All right, like as other than. Well, no, no, there's one mention in the first Aquaman movie where Mara says to Aquaman, you battled Steppenwolf. Yeah, yeah. Other than that one line, there is nothing in that movie. And I have a feeling Aquaman 2 might kind of kind of feel yeah. that way. Maybe a couple of loose references. but other than, And Blue Beetle, I also right. kind of feel that other than some mentions, I don't so, really think so, it's going to be tied So being that. definitive, no. Yeah. That there's nothing that says, yeah, yeah. for me, I didn't see, oh, this is the end of whatever. So I'm going to answer straight up. Definitively, no, there's not really uh, an end to the... Or it feels like... Quick, yeah, quick, quick. Adam uh, Feeble's asking, how was Keaton? Michael Keaton was great. Great. He was... It was. He felt like the same Batman we've seen, but a little bit different because he's aged 30 years. Yes. So he was really, really good. Oh, at that. but he moved, baby. <laughs> oh, yeah, he moved. That, that costume back in the day hindered him a lot. All right, so we got somebody asking, are there any notable cameos? <laughs> Why do you think we would answer that? Yeah. yeah. So, no, we're not, we're not going to answer that. Anyway, you know what, guys? We uh, Rob, you've actually got a split. I got a split. Because Rob's doing a screening of his uh, 1964 and, movie. Yeah, yeah. yeah, and I'm also back afraid. Back in the day. Back in the day. I'm also uh, afraid the more I talk, the more something will come out. Yeah, yeah. So we need to zip this but, up yeah. right but now. But Rob's actually got a screening going on in Las Vegas tonight of his, a dare I call it, classic film, Free Enterprise, <laughs> where he directed William Shatner. Um, yeah. And you got a screening of that tonight. Yeah, you it, gotta go it's get running it. now. I got to do it. I'm actually yeah. going with you, Rob. Go with, and go. so if I disappear and no one can find me again, it was Rob. It was Rob took yeah. me to, I, I, I don't know where we're going. I'm going to take you to yeah. Brown <laughs> uh, But I do want to say one thing. What, what I would you tell <laughs> everybody, avoid the spoilers. Avoid it, please. Avoid because, them. Yeah, yeah. because there was so much stuff that I didn't know about this movie. From the By the way, from the very beginning of things I would see that I had no idea about, it was so much fun to discover those things because it's really satisfying. It's so, even from the first... You're 10 minutes in, suddenly they're like, oh my God, this is great. So just, I was going to answer one more question. So just unfollow question. Rob on Twitter, unfollow huh? John on Twitter. Oh, second. For a second. Emmanuel months. Soto Sanchez, this is a very good question, is asking, do you have to watch the past DC movies before this? I don't think so. No. Like, would it, will you get more nuance? Will you have more nostalgia? Will it kind of color in the lines a little bit for you? Sure. But I think even if you watch, this movie is so well made. Andy, look. Full, we haven't mentioned Andy Muschietti's name enough. What Andy and his sister have done in making this movie is a remarkable achievement. It really is. And you can, if you've never seen any other DC thing, the way they reveal the story and everything, you're never going to feel lost. No, it's really well yeah, done. Very well yeah, very well done. But the only movie off the top of my head would be Man of Steel. If anything, if any, everything else is not. That certainly help. But they describe yeah, but so much. That's that, not even important. Yeah. All right, guys, listen, we got to wrap it up here. Uh, don't forget, we will be back tomorrow, I think, I think around 12.30 or 1 o'clock. I can't remember. I'll, I'll, I'll put up the event because tomorrow morning, 
is the Disney presentation and the boogeyman screening all in the morning. So we will early tomorrow afternoon, we will have our reports and our reaction to the Disney presentation. And then we've got the universal presentation and later in the evening. It's a busy day tomorrow. And then Paramount, baby. Well, yeah, but that's Thursday. Thursday. Yeah, Paramount Thursday. Saying. Very excited about the Paramount. <laughs> uh, okay, guys, that's going to do it for us. Thanks a lot for joining us. Have a great night, guys. And uh, we will talk to you tomorrow. Come back and join us. We'll see you next time. And uh, until then, my friends, bye-bye.